So, you're unsure if you need a fuse board upgrade to have an electric vehicle charger installed. Okay, it's just going to be a quick video just to explain to you briefly if you may need one, if you won't need one, just to be a guidance basically. Okay, right. first things first is you've got to consider the how the cable will be installed for the charger. Now, normally this cable will want to have some type of RCD protection. Now, an RCD is a residual current device. It's a big trip, basically, that protects against any potential problems, fires, injury, electric shock, or things like that. Now, this is a typical RCD module. And what it'll do, in the event of a problem, this switch will turn off very, very rapidly. Nine times out of ten, you will require some type of RCD protection for the char for the EV charger. This is because of well, how dangerous it could be if you didn't, because it's a DC current. Now the problem you'll have is a traditional RCD likely isn't what they call a Type A RCD, because you get all sorts of different types. Um, now Type A is required for electric vehicle charges because of the fact that it uses AC alternating current, which is how your house runs, and DC direct current, which is what they need for the vehicle. So a Type A is required to protect against all types of faults. So chances are, if you do have an RCD module, check what type it actually is. Um, normally, it'll be a, the way you can tell actually, just so you know, so I just wanna make sure you can see it. There's a little wave in a box there, okay? You've got a squiggly wave, and you've got a bit more of a curve line, curve wave at the bottom. Now, that will indicate if it's the correct type of RCD or not, okay? And that way you can determine if you need to have it replaced or not. An RCD module will normally be about 40, 50 pounds or so, um, but you may have one of these which is an RCBO, which is a very high spec part of a fuse board. In which case, same principle applies. This one supplying the electric vehicle charger will need to be a type A. Okay, so that's number one. Once you determine that, you can kind of rule out straight away if you need a fuse board upgrade or not. Now, if Basically, there's, mo there's another way you can run the cable for the electric vehicle charger, which I personally disagree a little bit with, is in your electric meter box, what they do is they fit a sub-board. They, they cut into the main supply, they fit a little small sub-consumer unit fuse board that has the correct protection for the cable, and then a thing called surge protection device. Now, I personally prefer that they're all all cables are connected directly into the fuse board. That way there's no surprises, you know exactly where everything is. And let's face it, meter box lids often get broken, blown open. Yeah, I'm a little bit anti it. Plus it's a spider's paradise really when you think about it. Uh, so yeah, I avoid that sense, but that doesn't mean it's not possible. Uh, but normally you want to check the room in the meter box first. But I did mention a thing called surge protection devices. Now, most cables nowadays, most electric vehicle chargers, I mean, will require one of these. It's a SPD, stands for surge protection device. Now, what that does is that protects against a thing called overcurrent. So, normally for houses, we fear a surge protection device to basically protect too much voltage coming into your property. So if there's ever like, I don't know, say you live in a cottage and there's a lightning strike and instead of the standard 240 volts coming into your property, 370 volts, say, come into your property. Excuse me. Now, if 370 odd volts goes through any of your voltage sensitive equipment, it's going to go bang. It's going to go bang very, very quickly in a very spectacular fashion, I might add. So... That means Wi-Fi routers, LED TVs, boiler PCBs, computers, game consoles, anything like that is at the risk of breaking because there's too much voltage. 
So the surge protection takes the difference in the voltage effectively and trips a fuse, so you're all protected. Now, with vehicles, electric vehicle chargers, trust me, because the, the vehicle is a DC current and you need AC current in your house, there has to be an alternator, in fact, not an alternator, an inverter. So the current has to be changed from one form of electricity into another. Now, that conversion process, in the event of a fault, could cause a huge spike in voltage potential, which means the charger itself could produce higher voltage coming into your property. And so a surge protection device is required. Now, some electric vehicle manufacturers have an SPD built into it, along with a load of other clever little devices, which baffle my primitive brain, to be honest. Um, but that's what they do. They, they have some devices fitted in. So you need to check the specification of the charger you want versus third protection device because you may actually have to have one fitted for your property if the charger doesn't have one okay uh, sorry i've got notes on the screen right behind you and i'm just trying to double check i haven't forgotten anything because my memory is atrocious on a saturday morning um so yeah that's basically it type a is yeah okay so linking back to a more logical approach to it it is always best to have a survey done straight away just ring a local electrician say to them look i'm a little bit unsure can you pop out have a look at this and explain to them what are these you want happening in your property now the good thing is it depends if you want to go for for your electric vehicle charger install now if you decide to go for a local electrician nine times out of ten they'll be able to do a much better discount if you're having the charger fitted and a fuse board upgrade done at the same time this is because their labor is going to work out better for them i they can do a better discount if they're on a job for three days rather than one day so it may be worth speaking to them getting a prize for both jobs separately and then getting a prize for them combined and see if there's a discount there it also means you'll probably i've ran into this problem before we've done fuse board upgrades and then the electric vehicle charger has been installed by a, an electric vehicle charger manufacturer who have their own contractors to install and it does run into a bit of confusion that confusion down the line of who does what where it's required it does it conclude it does it not it it's a bit of a faff so yeah i i do that speak to the local electrician get a price for both see what they recommend for example the surge protection device of some of the boards we fit is only about 40 or 50 pounds for the materials and not really anything for labor but certain chargers may actually charge 100 200 300 pound for their surge protection device in which case it's cheaper to have the fuse board upgraded with surge protection than to have the fuse board upgraded without it and to have the charger installed with the surge protection device do you get what i'm saying it, it's finding that balance between what's practical, what's required, and also what's logical. Because I'm not being funny. I don't want to pay out pointless money for something I could do by changing the fuse board. Um, so, yeah, that's that. Now, what I will say is if you are concerned of the pricing for fuse board upgrades, and then on top, an electric vehicle charger install, try and find a contractor that does... A variety of payment options now there is a huge rise in payment third-party payment companies making it a lot easier for everyone involved so we use a company called you know what I can't think of the name of it now but basically what they do is they're like a third party so we send a quote to the customer customer accepts the quote and what this company does is it basically offers finance to the customer for that principle. It's like sort of like car finance to a degree. Um, so what they do is they pay us promptly as soon as the job's completed. And then they do a finance agreement with the customer. So we've had multiple customers choose this option because most mid-range electric vehicle charger installs are probably going to cost anywhere between twelve and £1,500. And then a typical fuse board upgrade for an average spec would probably cost about £750. 
So that's a big, big price that sometimes is normally unexpected. And we, heck, we have some customers that don't even are not even aware of this when they get their vehicle uh, because the government made a whole facade that we can offer you this discount for the vouchers. And it, it, they weren't lying, but they also weren't truthfully correct. Um, so yeah, look at that. Um, so I mean, we could spread the cost for a whole year. But well, I think some of the finance companies, they don't charge interest either. It's like a flat fee. Um, I think one in our company, it either charges us themselves. Like I think they charge us like a 50 pound fee or something per customer, um, which we don't mind paying because it's very prompt payment outside. Uh, or they spread the cost or I don't know how it is, but they, they'll basically, they approve nine out of 10 customers. So yeah, shop around and find a contractor that can offer these payment structures. And I don't mean relying on them to offer you finance because that's not allowed. I'm on about them if they use these companies to help like pay with three and stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, it could definitely help spread the cost of it if you do require a fuse board upgrade done at the same time. So I hope this video has helped. I hope it's spread a little bit of light onto if you if you need a fuse board upgrade for a, an electric vehicle charger install. If you have any questions, by all means, drop them down in the comments. We'll try to get back to you. Uh, somewhere on the screen, if I'm clever enough, it's all new to me this, I will stick a video on explaining if you need a fuse board upgrade or how much a fuse board upgrade is or anything like that. If not, if I have forgotten it, then click on our channel and there'll be the other videos there but yeah if you've enjoyed this let us know in the comments like and subscribe and do all that great stuff to help us grow it'd be much appreciated uh, and yeah best of luck with your electric vehicle charger see you later